Welcome everyone. I'm here in the script mpg.r, which you can get from the class website. Uh, and we've got three learning goals in this script here. Number one is to understand the grammar of graphics as it's implemented in the R package ggplot2. Number two, we're going to learn how to make a scatter plot. First, a basic one that only has an x and a y variable, two variables. And then we're going to see how to encode a third variable in that scatter plot. And then third, we're going to learn about faceting, which is a strategy for stratifying a basic plot by a third variable, often used to ex uh, introduce extra information onto the constraints of a two-dimensional screen or page. There are two libraries we're going to need here. One is the tidyverse, and the other is ggplot2. So if you haven't installed those, make sure to come over to the Packages tab, click on Install, get those uh, installed and loaded on your machine, uh, and I'm going to assume that you're there already. So pause if you're not and get that done. All right, so let's load those libraries up here using the library commands, making sure they're installed already. If you get an error, you may not have installed it. All right, so they're both loaded. Let's load the data set. Now, normally when we load a data set, we use commands like read.csv, or we come up here to the import data set button. But we're going to be working with a data set in this script called MPG. It stands for miles per gallon. This data set actually comes pre-distributed as part of the tidyverse. Uh, and so we can just load it directly using the data command. It's a bit special in that regard. Data sets that uh, normally you find on the internet or as part of a course or CSV files, you have to go this way. This is a little bit simpler here. So let's load it up. Uh, and here's the first few lines of the data set. And you'll notice that every row in this data set is a car, like an Audi A4 from 1999 or 2008. Every column is a feature of that car, who made it, the model, the engine displacement in, year, uh, in liters, the model year, its city and highway gas mileage, whether it's a compact car, or an SUV, uh, etc. So let's first take a look at R's most basic plotting command. It's just plot, and this is how you make a scatter plot using base R graphics. Okay, so the syntax here. Uh, the x variable goes in as dataset $x. Remember this notation, this is accessing the x variable inside the dataset called dataset. And the y variable is dataset $y. So in this particular case, we want to plot the engine displacement. That's the size of the engine, like a 2 liter or a 3 liter or a 6 liter engine uh, on the x uh, axis and the highway gas mileage in miles per gallon on the y axis. And here we go. Uh, so there's a lot of pros to this. And, and certainly I, uh, in my data science career, have used a lot of base R graphics. The syntax is pretty simple. You just pass in the X variable, pass in the Y variable, telling R which data set to look for those X and Y variables in. But the cons, uh, well, one big one is that it's really just not that pretty. To me, um, this kind of has a internet circa 1998 kind of look to it. It's not all that uh, aesthetically pleasing, although certainly is uh, simple and concise. Uh, the other big problem uh, is that uh, base R graphics do make it very difficult syntax-wise to do complex things and make complex graphics. So instead, we're going to use a, a library called ggplot2. Uh, the commands are more or less, uh, the, uh, the pros and cons are more or less exactly the opposite. The cons are that ggplot2 are, it's less intuitive to use it first. You have to kind of wrap your head around the way this package makes graphics. But once you climb that learning curve in the beginning, the pros more than outweigh the cons. It is much, much easier to use ggplot2 than base R graphics to make really sophisticated and beautiful plots. So the basic structure of all statistical graphics looks like this. And this is something that ggplot2 is designed uh, to work with. Uh, a statistical graph is a mapping of data variables to aesthetic attributes of geometric objects. Okay, so we'll take that. For example, a geometric object would be a point over here. You could have a bar, you could have a line, you could have a polygon. In this case, the geometric object that we're talking about is a point. That's how we represent a point. Now, what are the aesthetic attributes of a point? Well, in this particular case, we've just got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And the way you construct a plot under the hood is to tell your software where do I find the X coordinate of a point and where do I find the Y coordinate of the point? And that comes from a data set, in particular the X and the Y variables of interest in that data set. Okay, uh, so that's, that's where these three elements come in in every plot. There's always a, ge a geometric object, in this case a point. There's always a data set where I can find uh, the variables. And then there's an aesthetic mapping. How do I go from values in the data set, like miles per gallon, to aesthetic properties of the geometric object, like the X and Y locations of a point? So 
Let's see how that works using the ggplot command as defined in the ggplot2 library. So you build up a ggplot in layers and each layer is indicated by this little plus. So don't think of that as mathematical plus like two plus two. Think of it as more like add a layer to a, a plot in the context of this syntax right here. So the first layer is telling ggplot2 where to look for the variables. That is uh, the, uh, the data. Okay, so in this case, we're going to look for variables like the highway gas mileage and the engine displacement uh, in the MPG dataset. Let me correct that typo there as well. The second layer is then establishing our aesthetic mapping, and that's the AES command. Okay, this says uh, we're going to take the data variable DISPL, that stands for engine displacement in liters, and we're going to map it to the X or horizontal coordinate of our geometric object, which in this case is a point. Uh, and then we're gonna take the highway gas mileage, that's a data variable in this data set right here, and we're gonna map that to the vertical location of the uh, point. Uh, and then it displays the data in a scatter plot, and that's the geom, geometric object right here. So let's execute that block of code and we'll see we get a scatter plot. And it, to me, uh, again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but to me this is a little slicker, a little nicer look than base R graphics. Uh, but that's really the uh, not the the major advantage of something like ggplot2 that maybe it has a slightly more modern clean uh, look to it the real advantage of ggplot2 is the ability to make more complicated and subtle arguments with data by having more complicated subtle aesthetic mappings involving more than just two variables the way we have here displacement is x and highway is y so let's in this particular case take the vehicle class, like whether it's a compact car, an SUV, a sports car, and so on, and let's map that variable to the color of the point. So it's easy to understand what's going on here when you see the result of lines 49 and 50 in my code. Now we've got three pieces of information plotted in this plot. The displacement gets mapped to the x-coordinate of our geometric objects here, namely the points. The highway gas mileage gets mapped to the y-coordinate of our points. And the class, two-seater, compact, midsize, etc., gets mapped to the color right here. Okay. Now, there are lots and lots of options for different properties or characteristics of the point that can be changed. And you'll see that some of these aesthetic mappings are more effective at conveying the message that you might be trying to convey than others. So let's compare several options here uh, with our use of color in this plot right here. So let's try mapping the class of the, of the vehicle to the size rather than color. And this is a bit of a mess, right? We notice uh, in particular that these things are ordered alphabetically over here. So somehow SUV quite sensibly ends up as the largest, but nonsensically subcompact ends up as the second largest point uh, because it is uh, the second to last alphabetically right here. And ggplot2 is even giving you a little warning message here. Hey, using size for a discrete variable that is a, a multiple choice question, what vehicle class are you, is not advised. It's not a very successful plot. Here's one that in fact is even less successful. You could take the class uh, variable and map it to say the transparency of the points and you encode transparency using the uh, variable alpha here. So now somehow we've got the most opaque points being SUVs and the most transparent points being two seaters. So it's the same information displayed in the plot, but we're mapping this variable of class, not to color, not to size, but to transparency, a fundamentally different aesthetic property of our geometric object, the point. We could try different shapes, okay, by changing from size to alpha to shape. And in this case, we get crosses for minivans and little dryer symbols for pickups and stars for subcompacts and triangles for compacts. And, and here ggplot is really complaining. The shape palette can deal with a maximum of six discrete values because more than six becomes difficult to discriminate. You have seven. So no kidding. It's just kind of hard to tell. You really have to, to work, right? And, and the, the idea that we're going to come back to again and again and again is you should make a choice for your plot that avoids requiring the viewer to pay a cognitive tax on that plot. And here, there's a big cognitive tax to have to go back and say, now wait, what was this little dryer symbol again? What was the square? What was the asterisk? It's just not obvious until you really, really pay attention. It's an unnecessary cognitive tax on the plot, okay? But what we've shown here 
is how you can use this. There can be other examples of where using color or transparency or shape are much more successful. It's good to have in your toolkit. Let me actually show you now a, th a different way uh, to emphasize this vehicle, this variable uh, class of each vehicle in the data set. And it's actually gonna be much more successful, uh, I think, uh, than using color or transparency or shape or any of these. And it's using facet wrap, okay? So facet wrap uh, is stratifying a basic plot, in this particular case, a scatter plot, geom point, by some third variable. Let's execute this line. You'll see what it does, and then we'll unpick the, the syntax itself over here on the left-hand side. So what you see, let me actually make this a little bit wider over here and a little bit taller. What you see is the same basic plot, a scatter plot of highway gas mileage versus engine displacement, Y versus X, for each of the seven vehicle classes here. So here are all the two-seaters, the compacts, the mid-sizes, the minivans, etc. So how did we accomplish? And that, these are called the facets and the, the act of separating out the data points according to this class variable right here is called faceting. How do we accomplish this in the code over here? Well, this was our basic plot. In fact, if I just copy and paste the bit that I've highlighted down here to the console, you'll see I get the original scatter plot that we started ggplot2 with. But what I'm doing here on the, the last and third line of this three line code block here is adding a third layer to our plot, the data layer, the geometry layer that establishes the aesthetic mapping, and now a faceting layer. And this says wrap by class, and then display the result with two rows of panels. And that's how we get one, two rows of panels right here. And we can add more layers. Uh, and in particular, you'll notice as you mess around with ggplot2 that there's a tremendous amount of flexibility. So in this particular case, I'll take this same plot that we had above. If you compare these three lines with these three lines, you'll see they're identical. But now I'm adding a fourth layer, and that is a labels layer that's gonna change the title the caption, the X label, and the Y label, and you'll see what we get. A quite creditable plot that has an informative title, a caption that tells us where we got the data from, an X coordinate label, and a Y coordinate label, emphasizing in, in English what the uh, variable is, as well as what units uh, it's measured in. And that is a quick introduction to the capabilities of ggplot. So we've covered Understanding the grammar of graphics, how every plot involves a data set, a geometry, in this case points, and a mapping from the data variables in the set uh, to the aesthetic properties of that geometric object. In this case, we've got X and Y locations of points, uh, as well as things like color, shape, transparency. There's two last miscellaneous notes uh, to mention here. So number one, and this will help when you start making more complicated plots, uh, is the fact that you can actually save a ggplot as an R object. So if I just execute this line of code that I've highlighted here without the left-hand side on line 100 and 101 here, and I execute that, I get my plot. But if instead I execute this whole block of code, what happens? Well, nothing different happens. It's just I've taken all of the information necessary to construct this plot, and I've saved it in an object that I've called P1. And now we can treat that P1 as something that we can add subsequent layers or adornments to. So let's take P1, and which is this plot up here, and add a facet wrap layer with two rows of panels. And now we get exactly what we did if we'd done the whole thing up here. Okay, it's just that this whole bit of code we, had to, uh, we were able to avoid and make our code more concise by defining it once. Now let's say I wanted to experiment and instead of having two rows of facets, just one row of facets. Oh, maybe the aspect ratio is a little bit messed up here, so we can kind of manipulate that over here, and you can make a decision for yourself about whether you think two rows or one row uh, or better. The nice feature of being able to save a plot uh, and then add subsequent layers to it makes that possible. Note number two, it turns out that you can also manually set an aesthetic property. So let's say that you didn't want to change the color of your data points, uh, according to some value of, say, vehicle class, or more generally, some uh, answer to a multiple choice question. Instead, you just wanted to manually set all of your points to blue because, hey, you like blue. Well, you can do that by passing in an aesthetic property outside this little AES command. So anything inside the AES command expects an aesthetic property on the left and a variable from this data set on the right. If you've got color outside the AES command, that manually sets that aesthetic property, in this case, 
to blue. All right, so that's a brief introduction to ggplot. Happy coding and happy plotting.